So before we go to the non-abelian case, I just wanted to highlight some of the salient points of uh, the abelian So what we saw so far was that uh, we have electromagnetism, mm, so resume is that we have uh, which happens to be Coulomb law and Faraday's law together, uh, sorry Ampere's law together. Right, because actually there are sources here. So in the laws of electromagnetism only the Coulomb law and the Ampere law has a current as a source which generates curl of a magnetic field. So those are those. The other two equations simply become identities. Okay. These two are the laws, Faraday's law, which has no source in it. Remember, it only says that uh, rate of change of magnetic flux in a region causes uh, uh, electric current, electric field to be set up and that electric field is non-conservative. It is the distinction between the EMF generated in Faraday's law and the Coulomb law electric field is that Coulomb law electric field is um, single uh, is uh, generated by a source. So it is, uh, wh what is the word? So it is uh, line integrals are uh, 0 if there is, um, so what is a conservative field? Curl is equal to 0, right? So the, the Coulomb law fields obey this, but here of course it is equal to minus dB by dt. So the E field that is generated by this is not a conservative uh, vector field. And so that law transforms, in, so if you will put the indices, so I hope everybody knows that uh, there is a mapping from F mu nu language to E b language with E1, E2, E3 here and it is anti-symmetric uh, tensor and there is uh, B, so it is 0, 1, 2, 3 and so where you have 1, 2, it will be B3, where you have 1, 3, it is minus B2 and B3, B2, 3 is equal to B1, okay, 2, 3, 1 like this. I think these signs are correct, if not then the B sector signs are opposite, one has to check once, well if you want to quickly check, we can check B3 should be equal to uh, its curl of A, so 3 is D2 A1 minus D1 A2, right, and uh, that tallies with it being equal to F. 2, 1, correct? So, F 2, 1 uh, must be B 3, which is correct, 2, no, I have 1, 2 is so good, so this is opposite, okay. 
right this is correct is not it b equal to so curl curl a third component should start with 2 1 no so how will we would write i j k and then d x d y d z and then uh, a, a x a y a z so 3 would start with 1 2 good so then the sign was correct correct so it is equal to and this is nothing but uh, d0 a1 minus a1 d0 etc so i think that sign is correct so these laws reproduce this the main thing i want to emphasize is to remember that the f mu nu is intrinsically anti symmetric in fact this e and b uh, split is completely artificial it was convenient for low energy physics because you are only looking for three vectors and the e field is certainly a genuine three vector b field is not a genuine three vector but it is a good coincidence of three dimensions that the curl has exactly as many components as the usual vector field right the an anti-symmetric Fij has as many components as n into n minus 1 by 2 in n dimensions. So, in 3 dimensions it will have exactly 3 into 2 by 2 equal to 3. So, this is a miracle of 3 dimensions. So, the anti-symmetric tensor will have exactly same number of components as an ordinary vector and that is why you have all these things that tell you if you rotate like this then this points this way like a hair coming out of somebody's head no it is not like that it is really a uh, anti symmetric field the uh, anti symmetric tensor and so here it all comes together nicely and they fit together as a um, anti symmetric derivative of a four vector field and then you can see that this equation is an identity if f mu nu is anti symmetric then it is easy to check that regardless of what f mu nu is so long as it is uh, it changes sign under exchange of the two objects or so long as it is expressed like this d mu a nu you can just check this out all the terms will add to 0. So, it is an identity. So, the great Faraday's law is essentially an identity was obvious and the other law is of course, which has no name which is the divergence b is equal to 0. So, those are automatic identities that follow from uh, the f mu nu being anti symmetric. Now, then the question is how do you write the action for such a system and also so some there are some remarks okay which we don't want to go too much into the details of but uh, one thing is that when you come to the particle interpretation you know that electromagnetism the photons have only two orientations two polarizations. So, there are only two degrees of freedom, but there are four degrees of freedom here. So, in the field description, so the covariant field description for I wrote this last time also, but let me just write it again. Whereas, uh, physical particles have only two degrees of freedom. So, there is a redundancy <coughs> and we can see the redundancy easily because actually we know that it is a spin one particle that 
more correctly helicity 1 particle Now we know that if it was spin 1 then from in quantum mechanics there will only be <coughs> we only expect minus 1 0 and 1 projections if it is a spin 1 particle and helicity 1 actually means that it is massless helicity is, uh, is in the massless limit. plus or minus 1 the uh, 0 part drops out because that you get the spinless component of the multiplet is available only if you go to its rest frame. So, if you have a massive particle which has spin 1 if you go its rest frame then uh, this after all is a helicity. So, you can get the z spin 0 component if you can go to its rest frame. But if you can never go to its rest frame then it will be always spinning and you can never overtake it. So, you cannot convert a plus helicity particle to a negative helicity particle, but here you can get it to come to 0 then the, um, chi the helicity will then become 0 p dot sigma right. Now, therefore, we observe that out of the 4 components this is more or less what rotation group needs. because it is a massive particle you can be in its rest frame and then rotations really are enough to characterize what are the degrees of freedom in it. So, actually therefore, fourth component A 0 seems superfluous. Okay. The 3 a i should be enough but when we go to this then here even only the transverse components matter. Now, there is Helmholtz theorem for, from vector calculus that says that any vector A can be written as A longitudinal plus A transverse where uniquely written. the transverse component has divergence 0 and the longitudinal component curl has to be 0. So, there is a further restriction because the longitudinal part is set to 0. Uh, to get the final 2 degrees of freedom. So, that is how the connection between the covariant field description and the photon or particle description works. Now, because of all this the Lagrangian has a specific form. So, this is 1 then 2 as a result of 1.
we So, the Proca Lagrangian one puts back m square and then there are three degrees of freedom. Because mass is not equal to 0. So, that is this case and there will be three degrees of freedom. The A 0 is superfluous. We can see that A 0 is superfluous because for both the Lagrangians what is uh, pi 0, I mean the canonical momentum right, canonical momentum 0th component would be d 0 time derivative of variation of L which is time derivative of a 0, but there is no a 0 in this because the no time derivative of a 0, because this is always anti symmetric, whereas this is d 0 of a 0, there is no such term going to occur in f mu nu, right. So, the Lagrangian density does not contain d 0 a 0 at all and so this is equal to 0. So, it basically says the canonically conjugate quantity to a 0 is 0 there is really no dynamics in A 0 field. And that is what we mean by saying A 0 is superfluous. Another way of seeing it is, so this is an exercise, check that the most general or should since it is an exercise which you have to think about, I will say quadratic order in derivatives first derivative nothing terribly uh, complicated right since it is a Lagrangian it is you know it starts with kinetic energy. So, it has square of the time derivative. So, in uh, covariant notation it would involve all the derivatives up to quadratic order. So, write covariant Lagrangian that is of this form and then uh, check the condition for. So, make a choice. So, here the parameters will be arbitrary. Okay. So, choose such that kinetic energy is correctly normalized
for each component and such that pi 0 comes out negative comes out 0. So, it will look a little mysterious, but once you start writing you will know what this is all about. So, you can do this and then you will, so my claim is that this f mu nu f mu nu if you will expand it out in terms of derivatives of a is quadratic in derivatives of a, but it does not, it is not the most general one and you will be led to this particular one by choosing the uh, parameters correctly, in it correctly. Okay. Now, coming back to this part, so just we saw how A0 is removed. To get radiation, we need to also remove the third component, which is this longitudinal component, which is the nuisance. And we can see that the gauge transformation, so 2 now, so this was the exercise for 2. Now, remark number 3. So, we note that the Proca Lagrangian does not have gauge invariance. If you shift a mu by d mu lambda, then the f mu nu is unchanged. So, f mu nu f mu nu remains. But if you shift a mu by d mu lambda, then this term gets messed up and a mu times d mu lambda kind of terms appear in the Lagrangian, whereas lambda is not something physical. So, you do not want it to appear. In other words, this term will not respect gauge invariance. But the Maxwell Lagrangian We can always ensure longitudinal part is 0, yeah, AL can be set to 0. without affecting a transverse. So, I am sorry these things are look, I, I mean dropping them as remarks, but it is after you have understood what the problem is and if you start thinking about it, then these are the answers. The real difficult part is to think of the questions. So, once if you get sufficiently familiar with Maxwell's theory, then you begin to ask the questions for which I am giving you the answers. Okay. So, you will think about it, you will have to go back and forth and think why we are making these statements. So, this is easy to see because A nu equal to A minus gradient uh, sorry, we uh, we have to say the uh, right, but for the space part, this is of course the transformation. We can see that this never affects the transverse part because uh, we can make sure that it doesn't affect transverse part by making sure that divergence uh, the grad square lambda is zero and it does not enter the longitudinal part at all. Curl of A old, but because curl of grad is 0, but that means in other words since in this decomposition if I take curl of A, the curl of L is anyway 0. So, this actually implies that curl of A transverse is equal to T 
transfers right because the longitudinal part does not enter the curl at all it, it is an identity to write if you take curl of this on both sides then you get this but that is automatically 0. So, that equation only affects the transverse parts therefore, the gauge transformation only affects the longitudinal parts. which actually and therefore, making this degree of freedom superfluous. <coughs> okay. And one way that people impose this, so now let us just summarize everything. Uh, in a sense in textbooks you will see what I am about to say next and if you try to understand why they say that these are the reasons for it. So, number 4 thus photon QFT is most often done with gauge conditions they are called gauge fixing a 0 equal to 0 and divergence a equal to 0 okay. and these both are within the broad class called Lorentz gauge and this Lorentz is not Mr. Henrik Antun Lorentz, but some cousin who did not write a T in it, which is d mu a mu equal to 0. What is nice about Lorentz gauge is that it is covariant right d mu m mu equal to 0. So, it is setting some scalar piece out of the 4 degrees of freedom to 0, but eventually you need to note that. So, this falls within that right. So, this is the class gen, more general class of gauge this is only one scalar condition. Here we are putting two conditions which also break Lorentz invariance a 0 equal to 0 and divergence a equal to 0 will then satisfy this automatically. So, def, these con, so there are other gauges the other gauges. So, exercise study other gauges Uh, for example, a 3 equal to 0. Okay. Right. So, these gauge conditions are put because of 1, 2 and 3 to take care of these ambiguities and where they arise they can be fixed by usually putting these conditions. So, I have said things somewhat backwards uh, trying to give you the reasoning, but normally books will tell you that these are the gauge conditions we use. So, I think we are ready to go to 
non-abelian gauge theory. And uh, so to go over to that, let us recall, so So recall that in the, and I also never said what is abelian and non-abelian. Recall so far we had d mu of psi equal to d mu plus i g times a mu times on psi as the covariant derivative. <coughs> I think a g was required here, no? e, g, e raised to i g lambda x i of x and a tilde x equal to implied that d mu tilde of psi tilde x was equal to, so by definition this is equal to d mu plus i g a mu tilde of psi tilde x was equal to e raised to i g lambda of x times good old d mu of psi of x. This was the transformation. So, so this is the meaning of the word covariant. It transforms the same way as psi itself does. If psi is transformed to e raised to i g lambda times psi, then the d mu of psi transforms by the same way. So, the same way as is called covariant. Now, when we go, right, now the business of abelian. We see that if you carry out successive such transformations, then the compound, right, if I have a lambda 1, then I do lambda 2. So, So, if we do <coughs> a tilde, just to save space, we will stop writing all the detail, a tilde equal to a minus d mu of lambda 1, let us say. And suppose I make a double tilde equal to a tilde minus d mu of lambda 2, then it is clear that it is equal to a minus d mu of lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Right. And similarly, and also as a result, s 
psi double tilde will be equal to e raised to i g into bracket lambda 1 plus lambda 2 psi because first transformation e raised to i lambda 1 then you do another one another lambda 2 just gets added in the exponent. So, this property that psi that the two gauge transformations just combine to make a 1 makes the set of all such transformation an abelian group because you can of course multiply them in reverse order this answer will remain the same. So, the successive transformations combine to give new transformations. that itself is group property number 1 right closure if you do two of them you get a new one which is in the same uh, league of things and then you can check associativity existence of inverse and because it is abelian also that the order does not matter identity of course is lambda equal to 0. Now, we want to <coughs> think in terms of generalizing to non abelian case. Here, <coughs> a first very interesting physical property of matter comes into effect because what do we mean by abelian, non-abelian etcetera. Well, <coughs> we know there are there is a well known group that can be written in this form this is SU2 where I have where a u can be written as exponent of i theta by 2 times theta cap dot uh, tau matrices Pauli matrices or more correctly it should be tau by 2 where theta is the amount of rotation this is the direction of rotations and the generators are tau by 2. So, this is analogous to this i g lambda, but now we want to we want this to act on something you know ultimately the covariant derivative was how the d mu of psi transformed. So, we need a psi on which this u can act, but this u is 2 by 2 matrices. So, right. So, first I just want to motivate that this psi you have to deal with has to be also a at least a two component vector, it has to be a representation of SU2. So, the 
the representations of the abelian group this is u1 group uh, you know unitary group of unimodular group mod, uh, group of uh, determinant uh, well its determinant is a complex number is a is a magnitude 1 determinant complex number so we need psi also to be a representation of su2 this so one does take various possible representations higher order ones as well the simplest is the spinner representation Now spinner do not start thinking of Dirac equation and all that it just means a two component uh, complex valued vector. Historically <coughs> this already existed 